Hello, welcome to this second part for the the Homeworld Toolkit for Blender, Homeworld Remastered Modding Toolkit for Blender. Uh, this is just going to be a quick one for because we I recently added the nav lights support. As I said in the first part, the character limit on Blender for object names in Blender represents a problem for nav lights because you things like setting the color values and timing for the phase and frequency can make the object name really just goes over the character limit and that kind of breaks compatibility with uh, with Hodor and Homeworld Remastered and there is still coming an update to to Hodor where there's going to be these sort of nested names for really long names but I figured out a workaround that right now works for nav lights and that I might might implement to into additional things like for, like possibly for animations holders and stuff like that and so I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough for how it works uh, this is the same test chip that I made in part one no real changes here and for making a nav light it's super duper simple all you have to do is you put your put the 3D cursor wherever you want. Let me go back to median point modifications there and deselect everything. And then just add a point light. And then what you can do for the point light is you can set your color. all the way down, R at zero, it's going to be pure green, and then I'm using energy controls the size of it in game, so then it won't look quite the way it does, but I'm just going to set the size to seven here, and I'm going to leave the distance at 25. In, in game, you can think of distance as sort, as sort of the intensity for how it renders in game which I, I know is a little counterintuitive but I and if somebody if comment if you would rather that I use the scale value as the size value and energy as the actual as distance and I can it's easy enough to tweak that up but I'm kind of distances both fall off and other stuff so I'm I'm just going to leave that as default and you have here, we have here the the nav light panel, which is added in the create tab. Create tab. Uh, at some point in the future, we might break this whole all these homeworld remastered tools into their own tab, just because I think I think that they're kind of getting a little unwieldy. Because I mean, you already have all the default create stuff for Blender, and then you have all of our all the homeworld tools create options down here. So you have the, the name field, which you just call it whatever. I'm going to go with Navlight 1, and then you have all the different Navlight types here. And in on the Gearbox fo forums, in the modder resources, there is an example Navlights thread, which goes into a little bit more detail about how the Navlights work. So this it does has things for like how... For the different, like the default navs, the decay time, and that's more for that's for blinking and stuff. But yeah, just mostly the big thing about the different nav lights types is that they control how they what they light. Like the the base shader nav light doesn't cast light on the ship that it's attached to, but it does cast it on other things. But they, and they also control the way that the light sort of fades in and out if you have if you have it set up to blink, which I'm going to go into here. But I'm just going to use the default one because the default one's pretty good and the kind of, it's going to fit here. And I'm going to put a green light on this side and a red light on that that side, and they're going to alternate how they blink. So I just click default, and as what happens immediately if you were watching the scene layout, and maybe go back and watch if you want to. But it automatically, it parents the it renames the nav light from point to nav 
nav l open bracket nav whatever you named it here and then automat and then parents it to the root node here uh, one thing to be watch out for is that when it parents it changes the co the the x y and z locations don't change but the coordinate system switches from world to the local coordinate of your root lod so if you have an unapplied transform like you have an un unapplied rotation or whatever then your nav light might jump to someplace else if it, when you actually hit the nav light button so you do that so it renames it parents it to that and then it adds these four properties here so you got flags frequency phase and type and type well, right now types just default flags. The only flag that I am aware of for the nav lights is the sprite flag, which draw when the when you have the sprite flag applied, it makes the the nav light actually draws the little glowy ball at the origin point. Uh, if you don't want any flags at all, just click this little button here and remove, and that just removes the the flag property, and you don't have to worry about it. But I do want the flag property. Then you have frequency, which controls how many times per second the light blinks on and off. I'm going to go with 0.5, so that equates to, it takes two seconds to turn. It just goes through a cycle every two seconds. And then you have phase. And phase doesn't really come into effect for when you only have one nav light, but I'm going to, right now, add a second nav light. So I'm going to recenter with Shift Z, put my 3D cursor back in the center, and I'm not going to and then I'm just going to mirror the nav light across. And something that I remembered that I didn't include in the first one is you don't have to do the scale x negative 1. You can just take your object, uh, shift D to duplicate again, then control plus M, and then X for the axis, and then that automatically, whoops, uh, what just happened? All right, yeah, shift D, click. Control M to mirror, select your axis that you want to mirror it across, and click, and then the, that just flips it right over. And then I'm just going to rename that to Navlight 2. And that color is going to be red. And the phase is going to be 0.5. So that'll offset the, the lights so they'll blink alternatingly. But other than that, they're all going to be the same. So then I'm just going to take the root, LOD 0, rotate X on negative 90, again, select everything, apply the rotation, and then we just go and we export the Collada file again, right there. And then what happens is what the exporter does, if I open up the Colada in Visual Studio. Is it creates for the Navlight nodes, it just appends all of the Navlight information into the object name. And that, as you can see, just looking at that, that is way more than the 63 character limit of Blender. But once now that that's all appended, just go over to Hodor, and I'm using this. I'm using the exact same Hodor parameters that I did before. I'm I still haven't checked out Hodorist. Uh, apologies to the guy on the Gearbox forum who's who made it. I just haven't you know got. I've been concentrating on getting stuff implemented for the t Blender toolkit and some other personal projects. Doing some stuff, stuff for that, and then so I run Hodor. That does that again. And then we're just going to do the same straight chip replace that I did before. Okay, let's score scout. And then we just jump straight into Homeworld again. Let's double check that. OBS is picking it up, good. And just start game.
Scout real quick. Ready, course cancel. Stand by for acquisition and transfer. Scout complete. Destroy enemy mothers. Confirmed. And there you go. You can see the nav lights just blinking away. If I move the ship a little bit so that Nav lights are actually more in the shadow. We get more shadow, so you can see the effect of it casting light on the ship. And that's pretty much that's pretty much all it takes for the nav lights using the blender toolkit now. So as more functionality as we continue with the with the toolkit, adding more functionality in, I will and as I figure out more how modding for Homeworld Remastered works. I'll continue to make more additional videos working through with walking through how it all goes together. And huh, Blender crashed on me again. I really still don't I don't know why I don't know if that's a bug that has something to do with maybe some memory limit being hit by the exporter that I'm unaware of, or if it's just some other weird blender thing, but I don't, it, yeah, I don't know why it's crashing. It crashes occasionally. If you are using blender and it crashes on you, maybe it's just me, maybe I have a bad sector on my hard drive, but whatever. As I was saying, as we add more f functionality and stuff, like animations, well, actually, animations all export perfectly well now, so that's a thing, but I do have to actually, doing 100% custom animations, I don't know how to do yet. But I will continue to put together little videos walking through how to make make this stuff in Blender, and I hope you continue to watch and uh, have fun modding Homeworld, and have a nice night. <laughs>